G'day folks, just a sort of a quick sort of um, knock together video today. So I've got this in, so I dropped it off the other day for, to get it running again. So the first thing I did was went to pull it over and it was extremely tight. Um, I suspect he's run it out of oil. Let's check that now. It said it was running and then it'd get hot and stop and um, well, I can see silver in the bottom of the crankcase. I don't know what the camera's picking up. I'll tell you now, that is just dry, dry, dry. Uh, so I'm going to chuck some oil in it, just to see if we can get it to run again. Um, he doesn't want to go any further than that on it. He said he borrowed it and wants just to return it running. So um, I guess we'll get it going for him. Okay. So I've got about 400 mils of oil there. I'm not going to fill it all the way up until I've heard the engine run. It'll be a complete basket case yet, but these these older Briggs and Strattons are surprisingly resilient. So no, I can guarantee if you pulled it apart at the moment, there'd be parts of the aluminium conrod gold onto the crankshaft because it was so tight when it got dropped off. It was like struggling to turn over and. It's just freed up from um, me fooling around with a little bit. So I do say with some oil, there might be a smoker afterwards, but I reckon it'll go all right. That's enough oil for a test run. Let's um, get you guys set up on the stand and see what happens. All right. Run. See what's under this cover. I've already taken a couple of bolts out. Seems to run all right still. It's got a little bit of a rod knock there on deacceleration, but it should have a little bit of life left in it yet. Motor out of there, the starter out of the way. 716. Mm, a little bit nasty. Right. This may have caused our oil consumption to begin with. Those fins are just not very clean at all. Um, I'll give them a quick hose and with degreaser and um, clean it up. All right, reassembly time. I might just take this air filter off and have a quick peek at it. Looking much cleaner. Some real caked on crap there. I'm not worried about that too much. Um, doesn't look like it's been dusted. There's a little bit of dirt in the throat of the carb there, but not like it's the end of the world either, so. I'm gonna take off this throttle cable. I'll readjust it when I put it on, just so it's not over revving as much as it does when it's on, on the run position. A little bit over revving is okay with these engines, but not the way it was, so. Get this on. Watch you don't pinch the wire in the front, because I noticed that someone must have been in there. since I last was, because last time I had this over here, I put the um, 
chroma style carburetor on it. That's fixed up now, and it's about to rain. We might have to move inside. I'll just try and get this job finished and we'll get on to the next one. So this is just the sort of day-to-day -day stuff that we deal with. Today's video is supposed to be about a Victor Vortex, but um, unfortunately these jobs take priority. It's all clearing perfectly fine. Nothing to worry about there. How did that come out of? Oh, these are shit stones at times. There we go, right on. I've got the throttle in the stop position at the moment. So I just want it just touching this kill wire like that. And what we'll do. So I'll start it up without the air filter on. And I'll adjust the RPMs by twisting this little tang here. Someone's already twisted it to give it extra revs, which wasn't me. Wasn't me. Um, but we can put that right. I think maybe a bit of over revving may have caused excessive oil consumption. And it's got a damaged rod in it now, so it would definitely cause a hole on the side of the block quicker than what it's going to be otherwise. Might have to get in here with some um, wood dispersant spray. Haven't actually got any genuine WD-40 today. But I've got some of the cheaper stuff that I use from cleaning up computers. Yeah, that'll do. Bolts up for sure. I've already done the one that was behind the starter. There you go, it's all back together. So I'll just try this ignition load and we'll give it a quick start. All right. Topping up the oil and um, send it on its merry way, I guess. I'll put this air filter back on. sort of metallic crud in there but for the most part. Just gotta see how much more oil we put in and probably about 200 mils because it was dry dry, dead empty dry. Yeah, 200 mils. All right we'll get that done and we'll get on to the next project. All right so here's project number two. Um, this is what I'd prefer to start off with. Something that hasn't been beaten to death. It's a Massport deck. The um, little Briggs and Stratton 450 series from 2010 on there. 
um, basically it got dropped off with the other one and um, from another mate and his message was basically dad wants this to run as good as the one you sold me um, and I think the one I sold him was in a video way back when anyhow um, it's got the same engine as this little Victor I sold him and um, it's got busted off muffler it's all right for one of those off a parts machine um, just in general very dirty need some blades still got oil in it though Mm, reasonably clear oil. I will change it anyway. Get his money's worth out of it. But just in general, I think we'll start off with the clean and go from there. Bit of greaser. Love fire the greaser. Good shit. That'll do. Right, and then we'll get the pressure. Okay, so first things first, I've got to get this broken chunk of muffler here out. So, what tools do I need for that job? I'll get a big flathead screwdriver. I'll just get one edge of it up. That's going to be a good one. Sometimes they're packed in there pretty solid, but nice. So you do the same thing again at the top. There we go. Sometimes you can sit there for ages chipping away at it and then crush the tube that goes into the thread. And of course, we're going to get our new exhaust. Alright. There we have it, new muffler. Um, right now, I think I might just put some fuel in it, see how it runs. I might just pop that air filter off quickly, that'll give us a gauge of what the engine condition should be like. Um, whether it's been dusted or not. It did rain a little while ago. Everything got a little bit damp. It was while I'd gone out, so anyway, not to worry. Well, Throw out of the carb looks good, but <laughs> that is just downright filth. Um, uh, so anyway, the air filter filtered the air, I guess. I like say. So. Anyway, I'll go and get some fuel, chuck it in it, see how the engine runs, and um, work out where we're going from there. All right, got some petrol in it. Let's see how. Yes, I already know how it goes. I'll just start it up there. Um, we'll talk about some of the issues it's got. <laughs>
So, for the most part, runs pretty good. Um, on that first start there, there was a bit of um, engine surging, in indicating maybe a lean condition. Um, that that could be one one of a few things. So it could be either a stuffed um, carpet red diaphragm, just because it's aged. Um, a stuffed diaphragm because that air filter was so blocked there was excessive vacuum against it and it sort of stretched it and ruined it all that it's just had a, who knows how long that engine's been sitting around for and might have just needed um those couple of minutes to run to um loosen up could have just had some old fuel against it causing or oh, old fuel in the jet still causing a bit of partial blockage making a lean situation where it will surge like that so um, for the most part, I'll leave the carburetor alone for now. Um, I'll give it a run first, like proper run. So moving forward, I'll take this top cover off, clean it out. Um, got to put some blades on there. There's nothing left of those. We'll warm it right up, change the oil, and and just give it a good thorough going over. So it's a couple of days later. I'm not sure where I'm up to on this video. Um, all of this is just raw footage edited together. So anyhow. Um, what I'm going to do now is take the air filter back off, run it up to a sort of running temperature and then drop the oil out of it, we'll give it an oil change and then while it's got no oil in it, we'll um, strip the top off a bit and make sure all our air f um, fins are clean, change the blades, um, just do all that good stuff that makes it well and proper serviced. I'll just quickly wash our air filter while that engine's heating up, let's hit it with a little bit of degreaser give it a good wash under water and then um, pretty well much hang it out to dry these foam ones you can do that and then just uh, soak it with a little bit of engine oil only a few drops really and put it back together I don't know probably had it running for 10, 15 minutes. Um, plenty hot enough to change the oil. I actually forgot about it. Anyway, um, we'll go and find my drain pan and put you guys on the stand and and tip her up. All right, let's see how this goes. Hopefully everyone stays in view of the camera. Put our dipstick out of the way. Just found some frame damage on this mower, but I don't know if there's a lot I can do about it now. Very runny oil. We'll have a look at that in a minute. That's the purpose of heating it up. It comes out very quickly. Doesn't leave much behind. And stirs up all the crap in the bottom of the sump. So I'll just chuck a brick under this front wheel. Tip it up and leave it for a little while. And um, might even move on to these blades in a minute. I'll raise the um, furthest corner up, away from the um, drain plug. You don't have to get 100% of it out. If you can get a good 90% of the oil out, that's good enough. So I think we'll call it quits there. So we've got only a little trickle left. Um, about to come back down and start changing these blades. I found something quite... Um, I wouldn't call it outright dangerous, but these blade plates on the mass boards have a ha habit of failing. Um, they crack around where the blade boss is. And someone here has just welded bits of rod across these cracks. That's not the way you do things, you just replace it. Um, stuff like that. You know, you've got a heavy disc spinning at 3600 RPM. Um, you don't fuck around doing dodgy stuff like that you know? um, so the frame split here so I'm either gonna make a plate up and weld it or I might just clamp it and weld the crack up see what see what I feel like doing in a minute um, otherwise pretty sure we're um, right just oh, I have to replace that blade disc now but um customer pose for that anyway so it's not a big drama and um, I'll quickly touch his base up. 
and then we can move on with doing all other little bits and pieces. All right. Threaded that as well. No, they just put Loctite on it. Good on them. So, hard to tell. See how bad that is? It has cracked out in the middle, obviously. They build it back up with weld. Not really recommended. So, I'm going to hit the spare parts pile and see what I can't find. Bloody lock tight on these things. Quick frame repair. The cracks actually went all the way up the side there. That was split wide open. And the cracks were like forming a way out to the handle up there and towards the front of the base. Um, so I just welded that up. I um, ground it all nicely, cleaned it up, then filled the cracks with the MIG. Um, doesn't look very neat, but it's penetrated quite well in there. Um, it's not going to let go there again. It'll probably start cracking over here somewhere. Anyhow, that's not my problem. Um, we've put a couple more years life into this frame. So now, I've gone and hit the parts pile. We've got a um, much newer, much better condition blade bisque. Um, just got to replace the blades on it. And she'll go to the yeah, so it's not all split through there. A couple of marks where I pulled it off the machine itself, but it's not split to crap and then welded up. So that's the main thing. And um, sort of look, there's a few marks in the paint on it, but there's no actual hairline cracks through it. So this one will be right to use. Flip this uh, mower back over, and this is what I meant by the weld penetrated well. I was going to come through from the other side and have another go at it, but it's gone all the way through this metal. So um, there's another little crack there. I'm not going to worry about it. But um, all the major cracks have been melted back together quite literally. Um, that's a good, strong repair, that one. Right here. Pretty sure. Massport and their wisdom. I mean, these blade bolts, 15 millimetres, instead of 9 16th, like most other manufacturers. Anyway. Yep, they all did. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Hit these other two blades. We carried away a minute ago. These ones are a bit different to Victor's. Let's start with your bolt, blade, washer. I think I've got two washers there. One washer. Send it. Blade. Bolt. Oh. Washer. Washer. Nut. the um, bolt that came from the mower that donated the new blade plate it just happened to be one of the mowers I bought in the last video and it's good to buy things for spare parts so we'll fit this blade disc up and turn that a little bit these mass ports you just line the two notches up some of them had bar blades too this one doesn't. Oh, a bit more. Yeah, 
Top half of that thread's a little bit how you're going. Just quickly turn this. Now it's got no oil in the sump, so it's not going to do any damage just being turned over or laying on its side. Just making sure where I've repaired isn't going to get belted by the blades, and it is quite close. So I'll just give it a bit of a love tap there. Now we've got heaps of clearance. Awesome. All right, we'll take this top off. So, sit the throttle cable out of the way. Not really sure what to expect to see under here at this time. Some of it's been pretty clean, and then other areas of this machine have been pretty, pretty horrific. So. owner of this machine's watching, I hope you appreciate the work that went into it. Right. And, yeah, it's a bit of a, um, bit of a dirty bugger. Okay. I'll strip this carb off. I didn't really want to strip the carb off, but because you know, it came good. But it's coming off, so I can pressure wash the life out of this engine block. Otherwise, this engine won't have a lot of life left in it. Um, in any minute, I'm going to get a phone call. I'm going to have to put this job down again. Go and drop off. That one happens. Ugh, dirty. Okay. That's just, um, that's just fucking packed. No, lack of maintenance, leaking oil. They're lucky this engine actually runs as good as it does still, so. Yuck. Yuck, yuck. Someone's had this top cover off before and haven't put it back on properly. So, I am going to go get some degreaser. And the pressure washer. I'll give this a real quick clean and make it look a lot better. This looks like a million times better. Um, no block fins anymore. Just very nice and clean, get plenty of airflow through there. So, um, yeah. That can also cause the engine surging too if there's not enough airflow to um, run the governor properly. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm just gonna chuck the top cover back on, tighten up these bolts and um, put some oil in it. And, and see what it wants to do. All right. I've already put in the um, half inch belt that holds the tank on. So that's sweet. Um, we'll worry about the starter rope. No, the starter rope's in quite good condition, so. That will be fine. Oh, there's one lined up. Get my three eighth socket. Pigeon up in that bloody tree. Anyway. Right, top first one down. 
Number two, tighten down. Number three, tighten down. Shuttle cable, I'll just put it back in the same spot. See how it goes. Sometimes they like a bit of adjustment with age, but I don't think it really matters. This time around, it was working perfectly before I took it off, so. Better put some oil in. All that work, just to run it with no oil in it. That was about 550 mils. I always just check it afterwards or after it's had a run. So you never get all the oil out, so you don't want to overfill it. Pretty used to be the funnel, I suppose. Yeah, it is what it is. No, not that way, you silly dog. Other way. Here. Right, get the last of that oil in there. Beautiful. Providing we've still got enough fuel left in this tank for our run earlier. Let's give it a quick start up. Now we've still probably got water in this ignition lead and water in the carburetor now. So.
So there you have it. Um, that one survived being rammed without oil. This one just survived a bunch of neglect. Um, the update, oh, the uploads are going to slow down for a little while. I'm sort of running two jobs at the moment and um, schedule's a bit all over the place. Anyhow, do what I can when I can. And, um, yeah, so keep an eye out for future videos and thanks for watching.